Formula One has always been about performance, always has been and always will be. Since the new regs were introduced in 2022, where the cars became bigger and heavier, most of the teams openly admitted that their cars were over the weight limit, and it meant that for the first time in my time of watching Formula One, in a bid to save weight, they started to undo their liveries by leaving large parts of their car in exposed carbon fiber. This then carried over into 2023 with teams like Alfa Romeo now purposefully incorporating the exposed carbon as a livery element, and to my surprise, it's clear that even after three years into a rule cycle, teams are still struggling with the weight limit as the amount of color has decreased even further in 2024. The race actually posted a very interesting article explaining that, despite the utter dominance of Red Bull last season, in actuality in terms of the gap from the front to the back of the grid, F1 has never been as competitive as it is now. Let's not forget that in Bahrain last season, right at the beginning of the season, the entire grid in Q1 was covered by just 1.188 seconds, which is absolutely ridiculous. When the margins throughout the season are so insanely tight, and when you're so limited by the cost cap as to how many upgrades you can bring, that is why the teams more than ever see the livery as just free lap time. And now, it's important to make a distinction that this isn't the fault of livery designers. It's down to the teams themselves who impose really strict limitations on them and don't give the amazing artists that they all have enough creative license to make the liveries as good as they can be. It is perhaps ironic then that the two teams on last year's grid that perhaps felt that they didn't need to save weight on their liveries were also the only two teams who won races in 2023 with Red Bull and Ferrari and who actually had the most color on their cars. I'm actually lucky enough to know someone who's part of the Alpine livery design team and after the launch of the Alpine A524, not only did they convey their frustrations of not being able to do as much as they wanted to during the six-month process, they also told me some interesting nuggets of information such as that Alpine believes only three cars were probably under the weight limit last year, and that the reason why top teams like Red Bull and Ferrari can afford to paint their entire car is because they are able to save more weight throughout the car in general due to better design and production techniques, which is down to better tools and investment. And now some people might ask, why does the livery actually matter? Well, partly I would say from my side, I have a little bit of a vested interest as a content creator. I know for a fact, having looked at data, that people are more interested in content when they see a brighter colored car in the thumbnail as opposed to a darker one. But apart from that side, which admittedly is not a concern for 99.9% .9 of fans, to me, liveries in Formula 1 have always been like the team shirts in football or the jerseys in the NBA or the NFL. They are the primary way that teams can display their identity during the competition, and when you start forcing the grid to basically blur into one homogenous group of mostly black corporate liveries, I think it starts to have a negative effect on how much people care about specific teams, specific drivers, and ultimately, the sport as a whole. The current state of F1 regs and this livery season as a whole leaves me feeling a little bit disappointed, because the one place where I think Formula 1 shouldn't be trying to hold people back is in the creativity of the livery designers, who bring life, color, and identity to the sport. There will always be design challenges for livery artists when they need to please multiple sponsors who are paying millions to be on the cars, whilst also trying to maintain the team's underlying identity. But for there to be a limitation as basic as not being able to have color on the cars, that to me is a step too far. Until each team solves their own weight issues or the minimum weight of the cars goes up, which is also not ideal given how heavy these cars are already, I don't really see a solution on the horizon. The only idea that I can come up with is a standard minimum weight of paint or stickers that all teams have to use that at the bare minimum will always cover the entire car and that would eliminate the livery as a component that can be used to gain performance. Even that, however, would take some serious negotiation with the FIA, and whether the people at the top of the team who actually have the power even care enough about the liveries to try and fight for them is a whole other question. Either way, those are just my quick thoughts on the current livery climate, but now let's get into my ranking of this year's grid from worst to best, 
And as always, don't forget to let me know your rankings in the comments below at the end of the video. My least favorite livery is the Hass. Now, in general, Hass actually have a decent color palette to work with, with the red and white from the Hass logo and their title sponsor, MoneyGram. But for 2024, pretty much all of the white has now gone in favor of exposed carbon fiber. And apart from the front wing, which does look pretty cool, overall, it's a bit of a boring, bland back of the grid livery for a bit of a boring, bland back of the grid team. Next up is Alpine, who I must say are pretty much the reason why I made this video. And now, just to clarify and get this out of the way, I think objectively speaking, their livery is actually quite nice. But the reason why they're so low down for me is that they are by far the biggest disappointment of 2024. Having the blue from the Alpine and the pink from title sponsor BWT is a really good color palette to work with. And yet despite their incredible 2021 livery and also their 2022 and 2023 liveries, which I was actually a really big fan of, it's clear that the livery design team basically had their hands tied behind their backs. In the end, the Alpine to me, whilst not bad, just remains a missed opportunity. And don't even get me started on the fact that their normal and special livery basically looks exactly the same. In 8th, I have got Williams. Whilst I like that Williams have started to establish a stronger brand identity since 2022 and have some really nice details like the Duracell battery airbox, I still think that this specific shade of blue and their design concept as a whole doesn't really blow me away. It's certainly nice not to have a car full of exposed carbon fiber, but outside of that, whilst this livery is nice, it's still not one of my favorites. And now, when it comes to the Sauber, for anyone following me on Instagram, you will know that I was actually lucky enough to be invited to the launch of their 2024 car and got to see this car up close with my own eyes. In terms of the electric green color, I actually really like it because it's very unique, it will definitely pop on photos, especially at night, and you're certainly not going to confuse it with the Aston Martin green. But again, it feels like a missed opportunity. Yes, we have a green front and rear wing, but the rest of the car is all exposed carbon fiber with a few green lines and a strange zigzag running across it. On top of that, the two stake logos on the back of the car also look a bit weird next to each other. And as a package, I just think, had the livery designers been given more freedom, we could have had something even more unique and something even more interesting. And next up is the Red Bull, which apart from a few very minor sponsor changes, is exactly the same as it was last year. And in general, it's basically the same concept that Red Bull have had since they first came out with their matte livery back in 2016. Any car that wins 21 out of 22 races is probably going to look good regardless. I've always been a fan of the Red Bull livery and even though they haven't changed it, it still remains one of the best and most coherent liveries, especially up against such a weak grid this season. In fifth place, I have got the Visa, Credit, Debit, Cash App, Bitcoin RB team. And now, whilst I love the electric blue paintwork that calls back to their Toro Rosso livery, it's still nowhere near as coherent as that livery was. In particular, I really don't like that horizontal white stripe just above the number that to me kind of breaks up this livery for no reason. I understand that Hugo on the side of the car needed to have a white background for their logo because that's their branding. But why did the white have to randomly carry over to the top of the car and break up the blue? I also find it ironic that this newly rebranded team trying to get away from being known as Red Bull's junior team decided to literally mimic their own previous livery when they were still the Red Bull junior team. The confusing corporate identity is one of many issues with this rebrand and although I do love the colors of this livery, it's still not as good as it could have been when compared to the previous and iconic in my opinion, Toro Rosso livery. McLaren is next on my list and I think this livery is an improvement on their previous one in almost every single aspect. The blue is now gone for 2024 which I think is a great thing because I think it puts even more emphasis on the papaya and even though they do have a lot of carbon fiber, they have added as much papaya in all of the areas that are important. From the side, there is still plenty on the engine cover and side pods and then from the front where we're going to see it most of the time on TV, 
McLaren have smashed it with papaya on the front wing, top of the cockpit, halo, and rear wing, which I think will make the car look amazing front on on camera. And next up in third, I have got Mercedes. And now, Mercedes actually has a pretty tricky color palette to work with because the colors they absolutely have to include are the burgundy from Ineos and the teal from Patronus. The silver and black, as we saw in 22 and 23, are actually optional, so the fact that they added all four colors and still made it look pretty cohesive is a really big achievement. Although this car looked great when it first launched, it was the shakedown photos that absolutely sold it to me. Sometimes you can't really judge a livery until you've actually seen it out on track, and it definitely had an early 2000s McLaren vibe about it, which to me can only be a bonus. Coming in at runner-up is the Aston Martin. Similar to the Red Bull, I don't really have too much to say about it. The Aston Martin Green, which I absolutely love, does all of the talking on this livery, which hasn't changed too much since last year. And with even more fluoro yellow added to the car, it's actually gotten a little bit better for me. I'm not a huge fan of the Aramco on the rear wing. I do wish that it had a bit more color there, but the team has done a great job to put as much of the color as they can on the bit of the car that the camera will actually see. If only Ferrari were as dominant on track as they have been in my livery rankings, because for a third year in a row, it is back to back to back P1 rankings for Scuderia Ferrari. And now, comparing with photos from last year, I think Ferrari are the only team on the grid to actually have more paint on their 24 car than they did on their 23. And now, I will also admit, I actually still prefer their red and black livery last year a little bit more because I'm not massively crazy about the addition of the yellow, but regardless, with the new red wheel rims, this is a bright, coherent, and unmistakably Ferrari livery where the team actually bothered to paint the whole car. That alone makes it a slam dunk P1 in my books. Just please God, let it be fast. Well, there you have it. Let me know all of your thoughts and your rankings in the comments box below. And if you did enjoy this video and want to support the channel, then do consider subscribing. That would be massively appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one.